So you've decided that you're gonna be replacing your master bathroom light and fan with a newer model. <clears throat> it took me about half a day to do the installation of the actual light and fan box itself. <sighs> it took me three weeks to take care of the electrical. <laughs> And so I am telling you right now that if you do not plan in advance when it comes to taking care of this, especially when it comes to which wires go to where, you're going to have a little bit of a situation. And that's what I want to explain about today. I noticed that a lot of YouTube videos out there, they give you the, the exact motions that you need to be able to install. So you're not going to see me putting this thing in because there's enough videos explaining about that. What I want you to do to be prepared for is the stuff that you have to have. First of all, the brome that I had before was a simple light and fan fixture that had two switches, one for the fan and one for the light. When I bought the Panasonic, I wanted something way much better than just a light and fan. The other thing is, is that I installed a timer instead of a standard switch because I also have a tendency to forget to turn it off. So the timer allows for me to basically forget and go back to bed. <laughs> the other reason why I stuck the timer though in there is because it's just common sense. You don't want to just leave a fan on while you're in the bathroom taking your shower. You have to let it make sure that it does the circulation of the air. So about a good 25-30 minutes with one of these fans on, it'll make sure it gets that humidity out. But again, that's where I faulted myself because I thought, oh, everything will plug in just like it's supposed to. It did not. So I'm telling you, if you're converting from a simplistic fan system to a more complicated one, you might need an electrician's services and help. On to the other things. I have uh, a basement in my house, and because I have a basement in my house, I don't have that special stairway thing that goes into the attic. <laughs> it was like one of those little minor surprises that comes up. It's like, ah, yeah, that, that, that's kind of an important thing. So for me to be able to get into there, you can see that I have my ladder, and I've already touted about this ladder before, but I'll, I'll keep reminding everyone. There's a special ladder that you can buy called Little Giant. And I'm actually saying that the Little Giant is the best of them, but they're expensive. So in the box stores, they have the other versions that you can purchase, was enabling me to choose how high I wanted to be able to get into my attic, and that enabled me to get into my attic, which had another problem. It didn't have any plywood decking. So I had to make sure that I purchased that too. And you don't expect that stuff to happen. But it was actually a good thing because I did purchase it from Lowe's. It's called Attic Deck. And it's a plastic decking that locks with each other. You put the screws in and it stays in place and it can handle up to 300 pounds, which is not bad for me, okay? Now, a few things, again, common sense. You're gonna be going into your attic. You're going to be basically getting into an area where there's a lot of, of your loose fiber fill inside of there for protection from the heat and the cold and so I do suggest that you get your air mask but please get the one with the valve on it I've learned very quickly that these things become very wet soggy things after about 10-15 minutes of breathing into them so that that little valve right there really saves the day by keeping that humidity down inside the tool that you definitely might want to consider purchasing if you're going to be using it often is the multi-tool now, there's a lot of ways to cut into drywall. I mean, you could do it simply with a knife. You can do it simply with a, a saw. There's a lot of ways. You can use a saw if you already have one. So if you already have the tools, don't worry about it. But if you don't, an inexpensive one of these that if you can get with a battery, because technically you're not supposed to have electricity out there, right, um, would be the best way to make sure that you're taking care of yourself because this really sped up the entire process of getting that Panasonic inside of that place where the brown used to be. The other thing is, is please, 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 please make sure you get yourself some knee pads. I guarantee you this will be the best investment that you will have because you walking inside of any attic, unless you are one of the lucky ones that have ones where you can stand all the time, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have to get on your knees and you're all gonna have to lay down and take care of the electrical work unless you have an electrician. <laughs> the other thing is, is that I do suggest that of course, you cover your head and make sure you have gloves on so that way you don't have to worry about any of those uh, uh, extra fiber fills getting inside your skin. It's very irritating because it lasts for two to three weeks. Now, when it comes to lighting, 
you're going to have to get an extension cord and then you're going to get a nice little bright light like this to go into your attic because again since my attic wasn't designed with it to be going into no attic lights purchase one but my suggestion make sure that it has a clamp that can go onto the actual uh, beam that's inside of there because I needed to be able to angle this light in certain times to basically get that done so my only suggestion is to get that or get some clamps that you have that can allow you to do that um, so just my little suggestion on that and then finally when it comes to the tools yes have your screwdrivers and have your Phillips but it doesn't hurt to actually have one of these around you too uh, especially when they're magnetic because you're going to be dropping a lot of screws onto your onto your ceiling basically when you're trying to get everything done sideways um, that's it that really is that it and then the rest of the videos on YouTube pretty much show you about the installation of things they're cheating a little bit though I mean not all addicts are easy to get into alright some of them you're literally gonna to have to slide in and so here's one last suggestion don't do it when it's like 90 degrees out there because it's going to get hot okay addicts tend to be 10 degrees hotter than the outside air or something like that so this is definitely one of those fall things you want to do and uh and then that's it but the good news is i got it done and if you have any comments uh, or any questions about how to take care of things or what i saw for my electrical wiring issues i'll be more than happy to uh, explain about that so have a good day and i hope that this helps